and I make it about three steps out of my bed before I just start like projectile vomiting. Cubing today is a lot more popular than it was back in like the early 2010 range. So like, you know, it, it's a little bit more televised now. So people are not as, they've seen like on the news and stuff, people speed solving and competitions and all that kind of stuff. But back in the early 2010s, that wasn't really as like televised and people didn't really know much about it. They didn't even know it was really a thing, but pretty much everybody knows the Rubik's cube. So if they see somebody solve it, whether it's in one minute or five minutes, it's pretty freaking impressive. So my point is that back in that point, I had a cube with me everywhere I went. And, um, you know, it's pretty easy to amaze people <laughs> when you're solving the cube, whether it's intentional or not. And as a byproduct of that, you tend to get a good amount of free stuff. So don't get me wrong, by no means this is a way of like, you try to get free stuff. But this particular night, I was at a sushi bar with my dad because sushi and just seafood in general is easily one of my favorite foods. And we walk into the sushi restaurant and this is the one time actually I did not have my cube with me. I think I had like left it in the car or something for whatever the reason. And we walked into the restaurant and my dad was going there pretty frequently. So he knew like the owner of the restaurant and stuff, but it was like my first time. So we walk in and we sit down at the sushi bar and right on top of the sushi bar, what do you know? There's an unsolved Rubik's cube sitting right there on top of the bar. So I'm looking at it and you know, I, I like to think of myself as a pretty respectful person. So I typically don't just go like touching other people's stuff and everything like that. And so I'm sitting down and we're, after we get down with our ordering and we're letting the chef make our sushi rolls, I ask him like, hey, can I mess with that cube? And that's, that's the key. You gotta say, hey, can I mess with the cube? So I'm messing with the cube and um, you know, naturally it's like one of those older Rubik's cubes. I mean, Rubik's cubes typically are pretty bad out of the box, but this one had been through, you know, some stuff like it, it was dirty and it, it was giving me borderline carpal tunnel, just solving this thing. So I get it solved well before he finishes up our sushi rolls and just casually set it up on the counter, solved. Well, I guess he didn't notice that I had set it up there solved. He's figured like everybody else probably that I messed with it and set it back up there in the unsolved state. Well, to his amazement, when he finished our sushi rolls and he lifted them up to hand them over the counter, he noticed the cube was sitting there solved. And he looked at me with the most just amazed look in his eyes. And was like, oh, you can solve that. And I, I told him about um, speed cube shop at that point and how um, like what speed solving is and how if I had like one of my speed cubes, how much quicker I could do it. So that led me to going back to the car, getting my cube and I did it a lot faster for him the second time around. But as a byproduct, he was so amazed. And I think partially because he knew my dad so well, he let me, he's like, you're, you're eating for free, whatever you want for the entire night. And I mean, I guess to be fair, he probably assumed how much food can this kid really consume? Well, Typically, I eat around two sushi rolls, and that, that's like my happy medium. Sometimes I go for three, but two is usually where I feel good and I'm not like, you know, overfilled. Well, this night I had six. Um, and by no means was it my way of like trying to just gouge him because he was letting me eat for free. But, you know, he was like having me try new rolls and he, he was excited, believe me. It was all like good vibes going around. So I finished my six sushi rolls and you know, everyone's all happy. We're all smiles. We go back to my dad's house for some ice cream. Now, you know, I don't know. I'm not a really huge ice cream fan, I guess, like for like, just like straight ice cream. I like milkshakes and stuff like that, but just straight ice cream, I'm not really too familiar with. So my dad scoops me out some vanilla ice cream and I was hesitant to accept it because typically, like I said, it's not really my thing. Talks me into it pretty easily. And I am having my two scoops of vanilla ice cream. And, you know, it, it, it's tasting a little iffy, but again, I'm still eating it because I'm not really too familiar. Well, I uh, go to sleep after watching a movie and overall end of a really good night. I'm sitting there in bed and I wake up and I'm like, man, my stomach just feels really, really, really bad. But okay, whatever. I'm sure it's just kind of, I ate so much food. I'll, I'll go to sleep and just kind of try to sleep it off. 
another five minutes goes by and just, you know, the rumbles start and I'm just like, oh man, like this is not good. So now I'm like at the point of trying to get to like the most comfortable position that I can while not upsetting the very delicate balance that is my stomach right now. So I'm sitting there and I'm just like laying on my back and I'm just like breathing and I just start praying to everything I can think of that I'm gonna make it through the night. Well, I realize that I'm gonna have to go and use the bathroom. So I stand up to go and uh, relieve myself and I make it about three steps out of my bed <laughs> before I just start like projectile vomiting. Um, there's actually still vomit stains on that carpet to this day at my dad's house of, I mean, you can just see a trail of just vomit all the way from my room to the bathroom. Um, I get to the bathroom and I'm just, I mean, I was seeing food coming out of me that I had eaten like two weeks before I felt like it, it was just insane. And believe me that whole next day, it was a long night, but that, that next day I was laying on my dad's couch, just in like the most delicate position to where if you moved me like an inch in any direction I, it just was like stomach ache all over again so i was literally carried into the car to go back to my mom's house and um it was not a very fun car drive home and you know after a few days i was able to kind of get back into the swing of things but unfortunately for me that kind of killed my love for sushi for about six months after that date until i had the courage to go back and try it again even though it wasn't the fish's fault, I don't think it just was kind of like, when you throw something up in that quantity, it's kind of hard to uh, want to go back and try it again. So, um, you know, pretty much ever since then, it's been a lesson learned that no matter if it's free or if someone's offering, I'm not gonna overeat <laughs> past my limit. And since then I've been in the same situation with getting free stuff. And believe me, I think back to that sushi night and I only have like, what I normally would eat and I don't I don't accept any free handouts for like oh try this or try that so that was the night that me solving the cube and getting a bunch of free sushi kind of came back to bite me a little bit but uh definitely was a uh, funny experience looking back at it. Yeah.